Okay, so this is the DA20 electrical system. The some things to note is the actual electrical system schematic is located in the DA20 airplane flying manual on page 7-27. I have the drawing that I drew and I'm going to teach you how to draw, draw to the left here. The battery produces uh, 12 volts and 10 amp hours under good conditions. That means it's a battery that just came out of the factory and hasn't been used very much. The alternator produces a 14 volt uh, current for the system and uh, can pr provide power up to 40 amps. The alternator does have an over voltage relay. Uh, the overvoltage relay basically activates at 17 volts. Okay. Some things I want you to know looking between the two different schematics are is that my switches look a little bit different from how they draw them, but the same concepts are there. Um, I draw my switches kind of like two trapezoids kind of smushed together. The switches that they draw are just flat lines that go up or down against the wire. And you can see that there's a dotted line between both uh, in both schematics between the battery switch and the alternator switch. <clears throat> Some other components that we have is we have three isolation diodes, one for each uh, main component, alternator, battery, and starter. Just like we have three switches for the alternator, battery, and starter, and then we also have an ammeter and voltmeter as well. Okay, so we're going to start with drawing the electric bus first. Just draw a big up and down triangle or rectangle, I mean, I usually draw it on the left side. Then we're going to draw our alternator. We're going to draw one big circle and then one small circle and then connect it via belt since it's belt driven. We're going to start with drawing our alternator switch after that draw the two trapezoids just like that just to the left of the alternator. Then we're going to put in our first isolation diode. Draw a box and then you can draw the other box for the over voltage relay and then there's going to be a little t-hat associated with the isolation diode. Okay you can kind of envision this t-hat as the wire is going to con uh, connect with that t and as soon as it's engaged. Okay when it's not engaged that t moves up away from the wire. There's going to be another isolation diode for the battery. Just draw a square and then draw the battery. Then we are going to have our battery switch after that. Draw the battery switch up above the battery into the right a little bit and then draw the t-hat again for the battery isolation diode. We also have our final switch which is going to be our starter switch. Then we're going to draw our isolation diode for our starter just to the right of that. Finally, we're gonna draw our starter. I just draw a circle with a box or a square around it. Now we're gonna start inputting our, our segments or connecting everything together via wire. So we're gonna start with battery. Draw directly to the left of the battery through the diode. Make sure you leave a gap basically for that metal part of the top of the T to come down and meet the wire, okay? You don't want the wire crossing perfectly through that T, okay? So, and then connect it to the uh, electric bus. Now you're gonna connect the battery switch to the, the battery isolation diode, just like that. And then you're gonna go and you're gonna start connecting the starter components. So up through the top of the electric bus, you're gonna go through the starter switch, diode, diode, to the starter. Now make sure you go through the top square portion of the diode this time. And then down through the starter, through the bottom T-hat portion of the diode, just like that. Don't make sure the wire's not touching anything else. And then we're gonna connect that to the battery segment. Now we're gonna connect the alternator system. Okay, so from the essential bus going out to the overvoltage relay, to the diode, to the switch, to the alternator, out from the alternator to back towards the bus, okay? 
now we're going to start labeling things. And I labeled the electric bus and alternator. One more thing that you have to do is you have to draw that dotted line between the alternator and battery switches. So this dotted line, what this represents is it's saying that in order for the alternator to be on in function, the battery switch needs to be on in function. Now, the only this is true when you're trying to start up the aircraft, okay? And let me explain it this way. You need the battery to be on in order to engage the starter. You couldn't use the alternator to start the aircraft, okay? Because the battery, just like a car battery, the battery is always has potential energy as long as it's charged. You know, as soon as you connect leads to it, it's going to produce electric current through those leads. So an alternator doesn't work like that. It needs some mechanical energy causing it to function. Usually that means a belt spinning it, okay? So that's why there is that dotted line between the two switches basically saying that, hey, you need to turn the battery switch on before you turn the alternator switch on if you want to start the aircraft. And just continuing to label things. We have battery and starter. We have our isolation diode. I put times three there because there's three of them. And then once we know what one looks like, we can basically identify the other two. Our alternator switch, our battery switch, starter switch, our over voltage relay, and our amps and voltmeters are going to be uh, two little gauges between the battery and the electric bus. So I usually just draw them like that with the little lines there kind of looking like old analog gauges and that's where they're located on the system. They're the same components that you see inside the aircraft, inside the cockpit. There's a couple more things that we're going to do here. and We're just going to label the isolation diodes. It's going to help distinguish the isolation diodes themselves and distinguish the current, how, what an isolation diode actually does. So you can just draw like a little triangle and then a line to it. Basically this says that, hey, it can only flow in one direction. It can't flow in, a, in both directions. That's what the isolation diode basically does. It's saying that the current is only flowing in the, the one direction when it's doing that. So let's start out with the battery isolation diode and let's describe that. So the battery switch, battery switch, controls the isolation diode. That's why it has a line going directly to it. Basically, this switch tells the isolation diode to open the T-hat or close it. When it's opened, it's the T isn't touching any part of the wire, so it's not allowing current to flow through. So the battery is just sitting there. It's not supplying any energy to anything. But then when you turn the battery switch on, the isolation diode pushes that T down, and then the battery is allowed to push current through to the rest of the system of electric bus, okay? Same exact thing works for the starter switch and that diode, basically the starter switch basically says, hey, diode, you need to turn, you need to let current flow through. So starter switch turns on, which effectively for you, you can think of it as turning the ignition to start. The isolation diode allows current to flow through and the starter engages until that starter switch is disengaged and then the isolation diode uh, the T moves down and then current does not flow, flow through that wire anymore. And then finally with the alternator, the alternator is continuously uh, per, uh, producing current as long as the alternator switch is on and that alternator switch is regulated, uh, regulates the isolation diode for the alternator. And then the over voltage relay, basically what's happening there is we can kind of put that black dot right there, and you can think of that black circle is like a circuit breaker, okay? That overvoltage relay itself basically says that, hey, when you're producing an overvoltage condition alternator, I'm going to turn you off, so that way you can't um, potentially damage the rest of the electrical system that's connected to the electric bus, okay? So all the components of our electrical system you know, our comms, our lights, they're all connected to that electric bus. So if the alternator is producing more voltage than it's regulated to produce, the over voltage relay says, ah, no, you're not doing that, and it pops the circuit breaker. 
So it's really important to, um, to know that what the over voltage really does. It does it at 17 volts. The, as we discussed alternator, it's supposed to produce 14 volts. So 17 volts can damage the system. So that's why it exists. It can produce something like a, a, a electrical fire. So, so how do you know when your over voltage relay has activated? Well, you know if you get the uh, low voltage enunciator on the enunciator panel, red lights up top in the cockpit. You can also know by looking at what type of voltage you're getting off your voltmeter. And if it hasn't activated yet, it will be something around, it will be something above 14, okay, or around 14. If it has activated, you're going to see your voltmeter uh, around 12 volts or less. And then that means that the battery is running the system, not the alternator. And the more and the longer that the battery runs the system, or uh, basically is in charge of powering the system, the lower the voltage is going to get and because the battery is basically dying. And you're going to see discharge on your amp meter, so on the negative side, and the last thing that you can do to verify that it is actual over voltage relay is the circuit breaker will be popped, okay, saying for the alternator, saying that the alternator is offline. The if you if you have an alternator failure, the difference is, is that you will experience the first two conditions where you have a low voltage denunciator and you will have the battery powering the system. So the voltmeter and ammeter will indicate that. But you may or may not have a popped circuit breaker for your alternator. Because there could be just something mechanically wrong with the alternator, or maybe like the belt has broken off. So the because the belt's broken off and it's not connected to the engine, the alternator isn't turning anymore, it's not producing any mechanical current. Um, so that could be a cause for an alternator failure. And then the circuit breaker wouldn't pop in that circumstance. So that's how you tell the difference between an over voltage condition and just a mechanical issue with the alternator itself within the electrical system. Hopefully this helps. If you have any questions, just let me know. Thank you.